What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, fuel pressure still remains an issue on the Evo. We installed a new fuel pump and nothing's really changed. I can still drive the car, uh, I just can't boost it. So we're gonna fix that in this video. We're gonna throw on the uh, double pumper. Um, I've had it laying around. I didn't want to put it on until I got back to Florida. I just had the extra scratch and I just wanted to have it. That way if I ran into fuel issues, I could put it on and lo and behold, I've ran into fuel issues, so. We're gonna install that, but in the meantime, um, I do have some have some other goodies uh, that we're gonna put on the car. Still waiting on some parts uh, due to COVID and shipping, so until then I'm kind of stuck and I'm not able to install a double pumper. I should have everything I need, but there's always there's always that one where you never know. So hopefully we'll just figure it out and just see what goes on. In the meantime, um, I do have some goodies. Uh, let's check them out. That was its own package. This was its own package. I'm wondering what else was in this box. And I'm like, oh, okay, this, uh, this little box from Radium. And all of that was just to hold this little fuel rail. I figure if uh, I'm having issues with uh, fuel pressure, I'll see what's going on at the rail and at the uh, fuel pressure regulator, so. We'll see what happens. I was unaware that radium, when you get these, I'm glad that these are tapped for 8 a.m. because then that means it'll uh, go with my uh, double pumper setup, but I have to get an adapter piece for this and that's essentially what I'm just waiting on. So until then I can't really install the double pumper. In the meantime, I can install these guys. I have the uh, master cylinder cap. I got this from Swindle Lad. He has a bunch of colors for these. Um, I'm gonna put his eBay in the uh, description box. Really cool dude, really good on shipping, really easy to communicate with. This uh, emergency uh, brake handle I found on eBay as well. We were working on the customer's car and uh, the e-brake kind of caught my attention and I already have the carbon fiber uh, MR one and I got that off Amazon for like 40 bucks. And it's not exactly what I wanted it to be, but I felt this and I thought this was pretty cool. So let's go install these parts. So these are the pieces, uh, the guy uh, 3D prints them, just basically removes the cap, throw this one on in its place and that's really it. This is his uh, eBay, his Insta and his Facebook. You can find him out on there. Um, he has some awesome stuff. And so how we're going to install it is this. Don't think too hard, take this, turn it to the left and then you pull up. You take this piece off, you put it in here Put it in around like that. Turn till tight. It's not going anywhere. Just a cool little addition to the engine bay. I dig it. She is quite dirty. There was a sandstorm uh, literally a few days after the last video and the sandstorm came while we were at the shop too nonetheless. Just kicked up a bunch of dust but that's why I have Old Faithful right there because uh, I haven't spun a rod bearing, I don't have any media in my oil, and I don't have any sand, so that's always a good time. If it comes off, it means business, but for a daily, I'll keep the filter on it. So this is the uh, one I got off of Amazon. It's not that it uh, is bad or anything like that. It, to me, I just don't like the feel of it personally, um, but I'm also not a fan of the leather. And so this is where this guy kind of comes in. A little bit of grip, but it's not slick feeling like this. So, just a little side by side. This one's gonna feel great. I just gotta take off these little uh, bolts right here. Literally just pull this off. If uh, you're on the OEM stuff that's leather, you actually don't even have to uh, use heat. You don't have to do anything. You literally just twist back and forth and you'll break the glue up and then you should be able to just manhandle it and just pull it out. So let's take out these bolts. Let's say it's pretty cool.
Thank you, uh, Radium. They definitely overpack everything. Thanks. So the uh, adapter is tapped for an AAN, and then it comes up to a 1.8 NPT, uh, meaning that it's just up for a gauge. I'm totally uh, excited to have the fuel pressure rail and the fuel pressure regulator. I want both to see similar PSIs. You know, it's probably going to be different coming from the rail to the pressure regulator, but at least I know if one is going out, that I can you know basically see or catch it ahead of time. Hopefully. Uh, it's just amazing that this little piece, you know, Radium, Radium makes some uh, really solid quality parts. It's just, you know, I uh, wish they would have just tapped it for a for an eighth NPT on the rail versus, you know, an adapter piece. Didn't know that ahead of time because uh, I didn't do my research. So do your research before you buy stuff. Gay. Hella gay. Fuck you, game. Package came today. Some good old jegs. See what's inside. Oh, thank you. Oh. Got some uh, lubrication for the installation of AN fittings. A little vice grip holder for them, that way they just don't get damaged. Then we got some cool tools. Uh, all the way from 4 a.m. up to, uh, I believe it's 16. Yep. So we got a 16 right here, and these help with the installation of uh, the lines. That way uh, they have less of a chance of backing out. It's not absolutely necessary. You don't need these, but we wanted to go the extra mile. It's something for the shop. It's something just to help us with what we're going to be doing in the shop. So looking forward to using these tools. Shout out to Jags, thank you very much. Um, last thing I actually need for the double pumper setup is my double pumper and the actual harness. I got sent the wrong harness. It was uh, one that was set up for uh, the battery in the front and I have my battery in the trunk. So waiting on those to get back and I'm waiting on a few fittings that should get here in a couple of days. So I'm hoping by next Friday, we should be able to install the double pumper. So skip to Friday. All right, boys and girls, we did get something in. Uh, we got some new stuff today. I opted for a different hardwire for the double pumper setup. I wasn't quite comfortable with the way that I had the hardwire set up on this uh, particular car. It gets hot, the pump gets hot. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to die. So I opted for a different one. Luckily for me, Evo Spec Performance, uh, the place where I got the double pumper set up from, offers that. I had to send the double pumper unit back to Daniel in order for him to do the separate hardwire for the main pump. So now the main pump and the uh, second pump are both gonna be hardwired, but they're gonna be controlled by the ECU now. So main pump will be uh, controlled by the ECU. And then when I hit a certain PSI, my tuner will be able to set up uh, when the second uh, fuel pump comes on. So now both will be wired up into the ECU. Both will have their own little relays. Both will have their own power source and grounds. So let's check that out real fast. I apologize for the mess ahead of time. We are currently in the middle of doing a turbo swap on this Evo X. Uh, the bad turbos over there. Utah rust is great, let me tell you. So, this box we got, got this upgraded beefy harness, right? I've got two relays, I've got a big connector, I've got power and ground sources for both of these, and I've got the little pins that are gonna be going into my ECU. Let's set this over here. This is the double pumper setup. Again, I got it from Evo Spec Performance. Um, Daniel got this back to me pretty fast. I changed my mind. He was able to work with it. So now I'm not even using this OEM plug anymore. It's all just going off this harness. That goes to that feed line, return line. So now both wires are going in. Both pumps are powered by this. I'm totally, uh, I'm really glad I went with Daniel's hardwire as opposed to the one that I had on the car. I don't have any worries about blowing up, so that's always a plus. Um, right now, I'm just waiting for the weekend to roll around. We have some cars to get out of here. Evo X, Red Evo 9. That one, we're doing a motor swap. We're trying to get some stuff done. Uh, it's currently Wednesday. I would like to be able to start working on this Friday. That way I just have the weekend to uh, finish it. I don't want to throw in the uh, double pumper if it's going to cause problems. Obviously, I'm going to be having my fuel pump assembly on the side. Uh, my fuel rail. So I know I'll be able to do a quick, you know, uh, removal and reinstall, 
if I run into any problems. I shouldn't. Right now though, new gasket, fuel lab, uh, fuel pressure regulator rebuild kit, another gauge, fittings, fuel rail, the uh, level sender. I've got everything that I need to be able to install this essentially, but I'm not gonna know until uh, the day of. Let's flash forward to Friday. And bam, look at that, movie magic. Um, we finished up the Evo X. X. We're still working on that motor swap back there. Still working on over there. Um, that one's getting a built block, so we're just working on that one. Hopefully uh, this weekend, like I said, I will be able to get into it. We put the dent on the Evo X, which is good. You know, we'll hopefully be able to get it out this weekend. But when I go and get everything ready for this car, I'm gonna have to do another pre-tune inspection, boost leak test, exhaust leak test. You know, make sure the fuel system works. That's always good and doesn't leak. And then I'll be able to really start tuning. Um, shout out to my tuner. Um, if you happen to be watching this, uh, I just gotta tell you, man, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Hopefully this weekend I'll be able to get it in. It shouldn't be too long. Uh, mainly the hardest point is honestly just going to be making the AN lines. That shouldn't take too long, as long as I mock it up correctly and do everything right. We do uh, have some uh, cool tools, so we'll be able to make it fairly easy. I've never used them before, so we're gonna use them for the first time this weekend. So, pretty excited about that. It's something that when you look at as, a, as an owner, as a car enthusiast, you're like, wow, this thing has come a very long way. If I can, I'll actually throw up a photo when I first got the car now. I've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. This has been my daily for, wow, well, more than three years now. And I've loved every minute of it. The ups and the downs. The downs have definitely made me appreciate the ups. I'm really happy with it. Uh, the double pumper is just gonna get me more to where I wanna be with E85. Double pumper is not necessary for pump, in my opinion. If you need more than a 450 uh, for pump gas, might as well just swap to the 525, but all those things are just, you know, between you and your tuner, you know. At the end of the day, the tuner is the one behind the laptop making sure that everything you put together works the way it's supposed to. You're just kind of on the sidelines hoping that it works the way that it's supposed to. <laughs> making sure you didn't mess up or the shop that you took your car didn't mess up. Hoping I can check back in in a little bit and start working on that thing. Got some Pacos right there. Uh, I think everybody needs a burrito in their life. Uh, just, it's a nice happy moment. It's Sunday. <laughs> Funny how that stuff goes. Start pulling all this stuff back here. Pull out the fuel pump. Got all my stuff laid out. Double pumper with harness. Level. There's a level sender. Fittings. Rail. Lines. More fittings. FPR rebuild kit. And then a new gasket for the fuel pump. First thing I'm gonna do, disconnect this battery. There you go, simple disconnect. Twist this up, get rid of this hardware that I have rolling to my fuel pump. Toss that off to the side. Now that that's taken care of, we're looking here, I've already removed my seats. Really easy to remove them, just this one on this side, that one on that side, just pull it up. And then the seat comes up. All the relays, all the wiring, all that stuff's gonna get taken out. And then for these guys, for this little cover, just a Phillips uh, screwdriver. I'm going to put this one to the side, so that way it doesn't fall in here. Cause it just, it just sucks trying to pull it out. It just, it just does, so. I believe these are eight. And then you just take them out. But we still gotta disconnect all this stuff right here before we start pulling stuff. After a long extended break, we're not that much farther into it. Um, fuel rail is out. Hard lines I'm having a problem getting out. I'm gonna see uh, what I can do. Worst case scenario, I'm just gonna cut it because I'm no longer using it. And I don't plan on going back to stock lines. So all that stuff's out. The FIC 2150s. Um, I also wanted to show you guys these rails. The AMS fuel rail. It's definitely an upgrade over the stock fuel rail and it has stock style fittings on it. It's literally a bolt-on upgrade. 
does really well with fuel flow. This is the radium fuel rail, 8 AN fittings on the sides. It's definitely uh, a lot more uh, spacious, has more capacity than the AMS. Um, little gauge up front. So I can use this gauge and then the gauge on the fuel pressure regulator and make sure that everything is seeing what I need it to see. Quality is really nice. I would highly suggest it. Hey, you stupid. Fuel rail is installed. Looks really amazing. I love the uh, the look of it. Definitely a real big fuel rail for what we're gonna get. So we're gonna be cutting this hard line over here for the feed. It doesn't wanna pop off. It's common with Evos. So we're just gonna cut it and cap it. I'm not reusing the OEM lines. I'm using 8 AM lines. So I'm gonna be routing that from the back. But for the time being, we're just gonna have it there just to have like as a, uh, a way to route everything. Pull that fuel pump. I think it's that. <laughs> All right, so I decided to be a, a hero and cut around my uh, fuel pump housing assembly just to make it easier for install and uh, removal. You don't have to. I found a way to pull it out in less than three minutes, but some people like Devin take 15 to 20 minutes to do it. Since we're going to be routing everything through here as well, I've taken off the back seats because my battery is in the trunk and then the harness is going to be getting power from there. And then I'm going to have to remove or go under the carpeting here and then go through the front to the ECU. So the joys these are going to be number eight i suggest a uh, wobbly extension and uh, as far as the uh the cutting I just kind of went around this housing plate so that way when i do mount it nothing really terrible is going to be seen it's not that big a deal anyway since it's just going to be the bottom of the seat this is a hardwired am 320 kit so you can notice the housing over here. These are the stock lines. If you're not careful with these, these tend to break. Let's check out the other uh, double pumper. Let's do a size comparison. So this is the double pumper setup. It's gonna be a hardwired uh, set of Walbro 450s. The second pump is going to turn on uh, at a certain PSI. Me and my tuner will figure what PSI to turn it on. It's its own little thing. Really good wiring, nice and thick. Quality stuff, let's drop her in. Double pumper is installed. Let's make some lines. So we got rid of a couple of the lines here. We kept the uh, line coming from over there. That just feeds the tank. That's what that line goes to. So it just pops on like that. We have the feed line attached. We're about to have the return line attached. Um, we got these semi-tight uh, for now. Uh, reason being I cut into this was honestly because I didn't know how the feeds and everything were going to be and I'm glad I did We ended up having to get a little bit more back here um, This one seems to be like this one's going to be the real easy one for the return line, but the feed line definitely uh, Is going to be a bitch when you install it. So just be wary of that plug-and-play options that uh, some companies offer may be better for you to do. This is taking us some time. We are taking our time with it though because it's our first time doing something like this. It's my first time doing something like this, so I want to make sure that everything's done properly and I obviously don't want to mess up stuff. Devin's also a G, so if anybody says otherwise, you send them to me. Alright, so we got some lines rolling. We have both uh, the feed, clearly where it says feed line on, and the return line. Blew them out before. We installed them, but once we make cuts and measurements, we have to blow them out again. So they're just kind of mocked up right now. The only thing I had to really do underneath the car, aside from drilling that and cutting that out, ugh, nothing like making old man noises before you're 30. So where these guys are coming out of, I just had to bend the uh, little bracket right there out. Um, I did pull it out and bust it, but it's going to be fine. It's not going to affect the uh, the tank or anything like that. At least I hope, but it shouldn't. Those lines are gonna be there. We're gonna route them around uh, everything else where the OEM lines go. Route them around there and set them to the front of the car. Before I forget, the car is already done. Lines, we're routing of the lines. Coming up underneath here, you just gotta bend that back a little bit. And then the lines follow the uh, OEM fuel lines all the way up. right here and then they 
to go up into the engine bay. I just use zip ties to hold everything down. Those fuel lines follow up through here. Underneath there, I have them uh, zip tied to where the fuel and uh, return hard lines are. And then they just go right there. So we got uh, this return line right up through here. I'm gonna send that through the back over there to where I have the fuel pressure regulator. I'm gonna be removing a couple brackets over here because they're just you know laying around and they take up space. And I think I can make it just look a little bit cleaner. So I'm removing that guy right there. And I'm probably gonna remove this guy over here. This was definitely a good choice, said nobody ever. The hardest part when you have long hair and your hat doesn't seem to work because it catches on everything. When you have long hair, <laughs> You use whatever you can, and right now I'm just using a little zip tie. Found it funny, thought I'd share it. We've mocked up the uh, the feed lines again, so I got my uh, idea of where I want to be at. The lines stop just about right there. It's gonna be a nice little mock up. The rest of this I will actually be able to use. Go from here to the fuel pressure regulator that's gonna be back there. I haven't mounted the fuel pressure regulator yet because I'm just not there yet. I'll be doing that. The return line. I will actually have more than enough room. I should be able to pull this guy out, blow air through it again to make sure that nothing's in there. I'd have to blow from the side where the fuel pump is. Blow from that side, make sure nothing is in here. Because if I blow from this side, it'll just blow everything in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then uh, take everything to that vise, um, throw everything over there, use the cool tools uh, that we have purchased. These guys right here. And uh, I'll show you guys how to use those in a minute. But again, I'm just mocking everything up. I have enough for what I need, so. Thank you, Dan and Evo Spec. All right, all right. It is starting to get uh, fairly dark. That's where I'm gonna be making my cut. I'm gonna cut right in the middle. Uh, you just wanna do a few wraps of electric tape just so that the, uh, the braided lines don't uh, fray. Makes it easier to throw them in the cool tool. It's gonna make a quick cut. Okay, so now that I have made my cut, I've just kind of uh, trimmed around the sides with uh, some wire cutters, just to reduce the amount of fraying. I don't have the right tool for this. Um, I have the cool tools, but I don't have the correct cutting tool. We could use a, a bandsaw for this, essentially anything else besides that, but I'm just doing it uh, the stubborn way because I'm an idiot. So we're gonna make sure that all this is uh, as nice and neat as possible. I'm going to unhook the feed line from the uh, fuel pump assembly. I'm gonna throw some air through it hoping to get rid of anything that might have fallen down into the lines, blow that out, and then start making everything with cool. So long story short, hose is gonna go in this end, and I'm going to thread it through as I push it in. If you just push it in straight, it doesn't seal properly, so we're going to avoid that. I'm gonna twist as I put this on. Line is on. Cool tool worked great. It's all nice and even. Don't think you're gonna be able to see it. Uh, that guy's in the middle, right up to where the threads are. You know, I apologize for the lights. Uh, we're not exactly all that bright in here, so I'm just working with what I got. But on the threads over here, I'm gonna add some three-in-one oil, just to kind of coat the threads, make it a little easier to go in. This is gonna go right in here. Since this is an eight, this is going in here. Before I throw this in and start trying to tighten it down, I am gonna put some electric tape around the bottom right here to make sure that the line doesn't back out from this fitting. I'm gonna just find the hole where the, uh, the hose is, give her a firm little press in. And then what you're gonna do is, what I do at least, just get a few threads started. Now that I got a few started, I'm gonna do them by hand. I'm gonna use my handy dandy AN wrench, tighten them down. You'll know that you're at the end when you can't move it anymore. It's weird, I know. There's no torque spec on it, just basically till you can't go anymore. And here we have it. And line. My tape's uh, showing very minimal back out, which I'll be okay with. Um, but the line went in really well and easy. Cool tools make them that much faster and easier. I'm gonna throw some tape over the top of this to keep dirt from getting inside. Route it and put it on the car, and then I'm gonna do the, the return line right now. Lines are all said and done, they're all laid out. Kind of crazy how all that gets routed through there. Now I'm gonna mount up the uh, fuel pressure regulator. I just rebuilt it, threw in a, uh, a rebuilt kit. Uh, the bottom's gonna have the 6 a.m. This incoming's gonna have the 8 a.m. That side over there is uh, obviously blocked. And then this is my source of air. So it's gonna raise uh, fuel pressure 
uh, based off of uh, boost. What you're wanting to have at idle is 43 and a half PSI. That's the, uh, that's the green spot. I'll show you how to do this, but essentially uh, you turn on the car, you leave the air source off, and then uh, you regulate the air. This, uh, you can turn it up and down depending on uh, how you like and then uh, find 43 and a half and then stick the hose back onto the regulator. And then from there, it'll be able to go up and go up in PSI and whatnot, uh, depending on boost. I should have everything I need, but there's always, there's always that one where you never know, so. Had to be this one. Turns out these guys didn't want to mate, so I have to wait for another 45 degree, uh, 8 a.m. fitting to be able to bring the fuel rail to the fuel pressure regulator. Everything else went fine. Um, so my suggestion, don't cheap out on fittings. Amazon ones are great and all, but you run the risk of stuff kind of breaking and not being the way you want it to be. So forewarning of that, um, spend the money on good fittings. Fuel rail, return lines. Those are all hooked up. I know it's kind of dark, sorry, but. So we're gonna hook up the battery relays and everything like that, route the uh, the pin lines. So the ECU is now moved over there. It's not against the uh, little kick panel right there, it's just over there. I just gotta be careful of this wiring. I can move it up, but then I run the risk of not being able to use the printer cable to be able to log the car. So that's gonna be fine. I don't usually have passengers anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. And then we'll have the uh, pin lines coming up through here and doing their thing. I just wanted to mount the ECU to see what's up. We'll depin it and repin it in the morning, but we just want to route everything, get it all set up and good and dandy for now. Those are the ECU pins. Everything's over there. Harness is hooked up. Everything's gonna be routed. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of electrical tape to these uh, yellow wires. We're just gonna hook everything up in the morning. Um, we're going to clean everything up. There, I am one dirty boy. Uh, It's not the worst, don't get me wrong, but I could use a shower right now. That's just me. We'll see you guys in the morning. We're able to find a fitting. One of these guys, we're gonna redo this side. Put it on the car over there. Packed house today. And try to get her out of ASAP. I had to re, uh, relocate the battery. Just twist everything around. Wasn't too bad, but now I got all this extra wire that uh, wasn't exactly planning on dealing with, but it's just extra. It's not that big a deal, but I'm going to be mounting this shortly. Get them relays up there. It's not the cleanest. I don't really quite care. It's uh, more along the lines of just working. So based off what I'm looking at for this chart, we're going to be using pin number nine and number 22 on the A connector. doesn't matter which one is going to what. So I needed some persuasion, but this is the connector right here. So was able to depin it for this one you just got to pull that white little uh, tab up get a little tool underneath there these are the pins these are the old pins this uh, purple and then this uh, yellow with a green line on it your blocks gonna have to stay up for these guys to go in so you just figure out the orientation of that figure out how you're going to put it in and then you should hear a click I now have this in there now hook this into the ECU. I'm going to electric tape these guys off in a minute. I'm going to put in your little uh, white blocks back into the harness to lock them into place. That's how you deep in and uh, repin your ECU. What I used was uh, I just used a little hairpin and just kind of curved it and then just went in to push up the uh, little retaining connector on the ECU pin. Let's see if it works. There's always something, always something. So the T-bolt clamp to the throttle body is now stripped. I luckily have a couple that I can use. So I'm just gonna pull the car in, do that. It's on speed density, so it's not gonna matter for me. I don't have a math sensor. So I'm just gonna pull her in real fast and then uh, basically swap out those clamps and get going.
so she runs. I don't know if uh, I could hear myself over the car because it's pretty loud. I had to raise uh, the base uh, fuel pressure. So when we started the car, it was reading 22 PSI. So I just had to bump that up a little bit and get it to 43.5. That's where Evos like to be, at least the eight and nines. Um, everything works, there is no leaks. I don't have any other issues, that's great. Stay tuned. I am gonna be getting tuned by my tuner, if not sometime this week, sometime next week. Also, uh, some guaranteed uh, content. I decided to go buy a authentic JDM uh, bumper, and I'm gonna be having that paint matched and everything by a good friend, Kevin. So, till next time.